Today I want to show you a few of the new features in Power Surfacing 1.3. For those of you who prefer to model with surfaces, weighting now works on vertices as well as edges. This means that you can work in Sub-D display mode with surfaces and create square or pointed corners without increasing the complexity of your mesh. Just as with edges, you can set partial weights. On an open edge, you can dial in the amount of curvature you want. On interior areas, vertex weights can dramatically change the shape of the Sub-D surface. With the addition of Thicken, the connecting edges will inherit the weight amount of the vertices. The next new feature is Curve Selected. This is useful on existing Sub-D models where you wish to remove detail but retain curvature. The procedure is as follows. Select the faces you want to remove out to the desired curvature. From the right-click menu, or toolbar, delete the faces. In Edge, or Any Mode, select an edge from the opening and use Fill Face to fill the hole. At this point, the filled area is relatively flat. Next, you will need to retopologize the filled area. That's best done in the Control Mesh Display Mode. From the right-click menu, I'm selecting Insert Edges. This tool has a strong snap to vertex, so if I have close vertices, I'll want to zoom in. If the edges don't match, I can select Edge Rings and add an extra loop with Insert Edge Loops, and finish the connection manually with Insert Edges. Now I need to select the new faces. And from the Power Surfacing menu, Specialized Tools, select Curve Selected. If the original curve was subtle, you may have missed the change. But if I zoom in and adjust the view, I can click Undo and Redo, and this time the change is apparent. The last new feature I want to show you is the new Triad section in the Command Panel. You can now type in your transforms directly. When using the transform type-ins, you should check Prevent Reorientation. This ensures that, rather than having it flip to give easy access to its individual components, the Triad will always reflect the currently selected coordinate system. For Translate, or Move, you can use either relative values or absolute values. With absolute, when you have more than one subobject selected, the selection center point is moved to the specified location. With rotation and scale, you can specify the axis or axes you want to affect. With multiple selections, the coordinate system works just like the viewport triad. The geometry coordinate system reverts to world if more than one subobject is selected 
and a meaningful average cannot be found. If you are not in absolute, it should respect the local coordinate system. I'll switch back to world again. Until you select a different axis, transform, or sub-object, the changes will be relative to the starting value. For example, if I scale two units on the z-axis, then type in 3, the scale is updated to 3 times its original. 1 will bring it back to its starting size. If I scale it back to 2 units on the z, then perform a translate on the y, the starting scale is reinitialized to a value of 1. Now to get back to the original, I will need to scale 0.5 on the z. The rotation snap toggle has been moved from its previous location to this section, so you can both toggle the snap on and off, as well as set the snap angle here. The Stack History Player, the other main 1.3 feature, is covered in its own video. Be sure to check it out. It's a great way to observe the sub-D creation process or to investigate alternative configurations in your own models.